And welcome to the mindfulness session. My name is Kim Xiao. For those of you who had not attended the previous mindfulness session in this conference, um, I also want to just say that due to my other commitments, this session is delivered to you pre-recorded. And also, lately I've been getting some internet issues. So if there is any slight disruption uh, due to the internet, I ask that you be patient and bear with me. Nonetheless, I believe that um, this should not detract from your mindfulness experience of being here and now. I would like to first acknowledge that I'm delivering this from Adelaide, the land of the Ghana people, and that I recognize the importance of their connection to land, water and culture and community, and I respect also the elders past, present and emerging. In terms of the format of this session, I would like to first give you uh, my definition of what is meant by mindfulness. I think mindfulness is now becoming a very mainstream topic, but it'll be good for us to get on the same page. I would also like to bust some common myths about mindfulness for those of you who are skeptical. And also I would like to share some research on the benefits. So in saying that, I would also like to make sure that everyone stays safe. So during meditation, if for any reason you experience any um, emotion, strong emotions, I ask that you resource yourself. So what that means is that you would open your eyes, you would start to take in your surrounding, listen to sounds, and if need be, get up, go and get yourself a drink. Most of all, please do look after yourself. Okay, so what is mindfulness? Well, using John Kabat-Zinn's uh, definition, mindfulness is awareness cultivated by paying attention in a sustained and particular way on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. So in other words, what he's saying is that mindfulness is basically paying attention, being aware that you are aware of what's going on right here, right now, and also being open and accepting to it. So in other words, we're not judging whether it's right or it's wrong. Now, this sounds very simple, but it's actually not very easy to practice because our mind has that tendency to wander off and sometimes going back to the past, worrying about what's happened, and then sometimes being anxious about the future or it's that constant planning. So what we really need is to anchor our attention to something. And of course, what that is readily available for us to anchor on is our breath, our five senses, for example, um, eating, when we're eating, we can smell what we're eating, we're tasting what we're eating. Um, when we're walking, we can be listening to our surrounding and also we can feel what it feels like to be walking in our body. So in other words, we can really practice mindfulness in almost anything we do daily. Um, it's about paying attention. And also another form of mindfulness where we can anchor our body, of course, is body scan or mindful, other mindful movements like yoga, tai chi, qigong. So one of the myths about mindfulness is people think that they have to uh, not think but, and, and that they have to be so still. But really, mindfulness is not about getting rid of thoughts or emotions. And yeah, it's not necessarily relaxing either because quite often it's about being um, just really about being open to what is happening. If it's pain, can we be open to the fact that we're feeling pain in our body? If it's anxiety, can we feel and be open to the fact that we, you know, our heart is pounding, we're feeling anxious? So using John Kabat-Zinn's work, Mindfulness 
in terms of mindfulness, we need to embrace and cultivate these attitudes of not judging whether the, the whatever we're ha- is going on right here right now is um, good or bad and um, we need to be patient with ourselves. we need to be accepting and letting things be and also not trying to achieve anything in particular and then trusting trusting that we have that capacity to be with what's right here right now so in terms of the benefits, believe it or not, there are now 17,000 publications, research showing the positive effects of mindfulness. It's shown to improve our general well-being, um, better self-regulation, lower our depression, anxiety, physical pain and stress. And the reason for this is that when we're able to ground and center ourselves using an anchor, for example, the breath or, or our body sensations, as I talked about, what it really is allowing us to do physiologically is to activate our parasympathetic nervous system. In other words, it slows down our heart rate, it slows down our breathing, our blood pressure, and it also comes down that part of our brain that... Um, is responsible for our fight, flight, and freeze response. And then in turn activates our prefrontal cortex, which is that part of our brain that is um, responsible for our executive functioning, our emotional uh, regulation. And what all of you might be interested because I imagine there are many of you who are in a therapeutic settings and of course, you, you know, being mental health professionals, research have also shown that if it can improve um, therapeutic presence. So what that means is that you are really able to be there for your client. And in that process you of practicing mindfulness, you cultivate compassion, self-attunement, um, and, and your perspective of, of suffering broadens. So in other words, you can then form that stronger uh, therapeutic alliance with your client. And then the research also shows that when that happens, um, therapists or, or counsellors or you know people who actually meditate, they actually have help to heal the client better. So in other words, the evidence is showing that patients have better improvements in terms of symptom reductions and their rate of change when they're treated by meditators rather than non-meditators. So how is meditation different from mindfulness? Well, meditation really is just a more formal practice of mindfulness. It's really about training our our mind to focus, to have better attention, but it's also training our awareness. So basically, concentration and awareness work hand in hand in a meditation practice. And there are many, many types of meditation. There is... um, Mindfulness meditation, which is what I'll be guiding you through in a minute. Mantra, loving kindness meditation and visualization. Ultimately, whether it's mindfulness or meditation, it is really about awakening us to what we've been conditioned in our mind and in our in our behavior. And over time, with regular practice, you start to see that things are never permanent. And therefore, we, it cultivates an openness in us, an acceptance in us. And what that means is that we're slowly, slowly increasing our window of tolerance, our tolerance to whatever happens, good or bad. But also at the same time, when it's good, we don't hang on to it and wish that it, beca- it is the same forever. What I love is this quote from my teacher, Jack Confield, who says that you have within you an unlimited capacity for extraordinary love, for joy, and for unshakable freedom. So here, I think what he means by unshakable freedom is the fact that we then have that spacious awareness to 
to be aware of what's going on inside so we can regulate what's going on inside, which therefore gives us a choice. So, you know, I equate freedom with choice when we can have that choice of how we feel, how we want to respond to a particular situation. So on that note, I would like to take you through a mindfulness practice. And I thought today, because, um, or at least on Thursday, um, what you'll be doing after this session is on the mental health for LGBTQ. I thought the relevant qualities for this issue is really about radical acceptance. Acceptance of who we truly are and acceptance of others. So what I'd like to guide you through is an open awareness mindfulness meditation. So right now, what I'd like you to do is sit in a way that you're comfortable sitting and closing your eyes. If you're comfortable closing your eyes, um, otherwise you place your gaze down on the floor to one point in front of you. And then just tuning into your breath, take some deep breath for now, maybe three to five deep breaths where you're Taking in your inhale, making that long, and then your exhale is slow. And with every exhale, see if you could sense that the stresses in your body, any tension you might be holding in your body is, is being released together with that exhale. If you could, for now, just see if you could release the tension on your face by dropping your jaw, lowering your shadows, uh, sorry, shoulders back down to your spine. Now just breathe naturally. And I'd like you to tune in to the sounds around you. Maybe it's the sound of my voice. Maybe there are other sounds near or far. Just notice how all the sounds rise and vanish. If you could listen to this in an open, relaxed way. Now, as you listen, let yourself sense that your mind is not limited to your head. Sense that your mind is expanding to be like an open sky, clear and vast like space. Sense that there is no inside or outside and that your awareness of your mind is in every direction is expansive like the sky.
And you may still notice the sounds around you. And you might notice that they rise and pass away in the open space of your own mind. So relax in this openness and just listen. As you rest in this open awareness, notice how thoughts and images also arise and vanish like sounds. So let the thoughts and images come and go without any struggle or resistance. They may be pleasant or unpleasant thoughts, pictures, words, feelings. Let them move unrestricted in the space of mind. Sense that you have that capacity to be in this space. Problems, possibilities, joys and sorrows, they come and go like clouds in the clear sky of the mind. With this spacious awareness, I invite you now to become aware of the sensations of your breath and the sensations you might feel in your body. Notice that the breath breathes itself. It moves like a breeze. And in this open awareness, you may notice that your body is not solid. You can sense that there are areas of hardness and softness. You might sense tingling, pressure, warm and cool sensations all floating in the space of the mind's awareness. And you are this vessel of acceptance. Rest in this open awareness. Finally, pay attention to the awareness itself. Notice how the open space of awareness 
is naturally timeless, transparent, without conflict, allowing all things, but not limited by them. Trust this awareness. May the blessings of this practice awaken your own inner wisdom and inspire your compassion. And through the blessing of your heart, may the world find peace. I hope you found some centering and spaciousness in that practice. I just want to leave you with this little um, poem. Little by little, I learned to know the treasured wisdom of long ago. And one of these days, perhaps we'll see that the world will be the better for me. And do you think, do you not think that this is a simple plan, made him a wise and useful man. So I wanted to leave you with this because I hope that from what you've heard today that the practice of mindfulness is really important for us and we don't think twice when we wake up in the morning after breakfast and brush our teeth. Um, and yet, and we do that because we know it's important for the health of our teeth. And so I hope that you will take this away as mindfulness is important for your mind and that you would do a little, a, a little every day. And maybe it's just a couple of minutes of just coming back to the present moment and finding an anchor to, to um, center yourself. And I would also just want to say that I offer a free online meditation every Wednesday. I call it a midweek reset. You are welcome to join me. It's free. If you're interested, my email is on the slide. And there are also other guided talks and meditations and articles on my website if you like to check it out. And otherwise, I wish you all the best. And... Thank you for being a mental health professional and we all need it and, and all the best. Thank you very much.